Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is After Touch Audio. These guns sound great. The Call of Duty series has always been a heavy reference point for me when I'm working on games that need weapon sounds. And for good reason. They have some of the best sound designers and field recorders working on their games, and they have refined their craft over the years in order to make super powerful weapon sounds. In my last gun sound effects video, I went over how to make modern gunshots from more of an entry-level perspective. Today, I want to dive much deeper and go over everything I've learned on how to create Call of Duty level gun sounds like this. Okay, pause. This is actually a process I've built over the last few years trying to replicate the sound quality they achieve. So if the Call of Duty sound team happens to just see this, I would love to know what you guys think. Sound design for video games is a lot more complex than sound design for films. When we design sound effects for a film, we know everything there is to know about that sound just by looking at the footage provided to us. Where the sound is located in the world, what time and space does it take place, and how long the sound effects will last. In video games, however, we don't know if the player is going to be outside, inside, standing, flying, prone, which gun they're holding, how much ammo is left in the clip, and even what surface they're on. There are many more variables when approaching a sound for a video game other than just making the finished sound wrapping up in a digital wrapper and calling it a day. So when you start building a gun for a game, it is very important to write down all the details you want to include for each gun, areas your players might encounter, and surfaces they might interact with. Keep a working spreadsheet on hand so you can keep track of your progress as you go. When sampling guns, more microphones are always better. But will any microphone work? No. Well, yes, but no, it's, it's complicated, let me explain. For microphones placed close to the firearm, it is important to select a microphone that can handle at least 145 dB. You will also need to keep the microphones behind the muzzle and not in front of the muzzle, as a blast wave can easily overpower the microphones. This feature is also a massive help. Now, when capturing gunfire, there are four primary elements that you need to capture. Foley, far distant perspectives, medium distant perspectives, and close perspectives. These distant microphones will not only be good for gun tails, but they'll also be fantastic samples to use as distant NPC layers. It is not uncommon to have dozens of microphones on site in order to capture multiple different perspectives of the weapons. Having some more special microphones with a higher SPL ratings like the DPAs or the COS 11s can be awesome tools to place on the guns themselves as they're firing to capture more mechanical elements. Now, there are a lot of samples you can collect from a gun recording session. Here's a quick list of some of the things that I think are super useful to have. Burst shots in varying lengths, an abundance of single shots, interior and exterior tails, and gun foldy, which covers a large array of samples per gun. Here is a massive list of all the microphones that are used on set. Now, not everyone has access to tons of firearms, a treasure chest of microphones, or high-end recorders, so I have left some of my all-time favorite gun libraries in the description below. The Recordist has to be one of my all-time favorite producers when it comes to accurately capturing guns. Anything you get from him is gold, and I reference his work a lot in my own sound design. Now, let's look at what goes into making some weapons. Now that we have some samples, what do we need to create in order to get some COD level gun sounds? For this video, I'll be omitting all of the reload sounds, additional foley, and I'll just be focusing more on the shots themselves. So let's disassemble this gun and break it down into individual layers. Let's start with the mechanical layers. Trigger pulls are fantastic little elements to have inside your gun designs. When a gun is fired, a round is usually cycled through the weapon via a slider. Capturing the slider going back and forth is a super important element to have within your gun designs. Now for the gun firing. For rapid firing weapons, it is better to use a single shot sample rather than using a separate set of samples for burst and single shots. Doing things this way can give you more control over the speed at which your weapon is fired and can give you even more controls over the shots themselves. In my experience from sampling instruments, six seems to be the lucky number of variations needed to not have that dreaded machine gun effect. We 
We can also create subtle variances within the pitch in middleware. So having six solid samples for every layer is absolutely ideal. This is where that massive microphone list comes in handy. If you have multiple close microphones, we can then combine these microphones to get a solid sounding shot. The goal here is to create something that's kind of dry sounding. You don't want your shot samples to be clearly defined within a space as the player will be changing the space they are in constantly. Okay, now stop the tape. Do you think you're the only one that can be firing this weapon? Other players can also select this same weapon, and they won't always be right next to you. So grabbing some of your medium and far microphone perspectives will be super useful in not only creating that space between you and the other players, but having two different distances will also give your players better audio information about how far the enemies are from the player. Now there is something to be said about taking a kick drum and placing them on all of your weapons for that nice low impact sound and calling it a day, but I like to get a little bit more custom than that. Each gun is unique and should hit your chest differently. An AK-47 LFE should sound different than a Glock 22 or an RPG. LFE layers are relatively easy to create with any synth just by applying a sharp attack and a short decay. If you're feeling a little fancy, you can even do some small pitch automations, but focusing more on the impact itself is usually better. Envelopes like this make really quick work of LFEs, but really experiment with them. Don't be afraid to add some saturation and really dirty them up. They can really help add some useful textures to your weapons. The tail of the gun is where all of the power and spatial information is located. And this is one of the most important assets in any pro gun recording. Tails can be swapped out depending on where your character is located within the world, whether it be swamps, mountains, open areas. Tails play a huge role in the realism of your weapon designs. But exterior recordings are not the only types of recordings you'll need. You'll also need a variety of interior recordings. Now, while I don't recommend discharging the firearm inside your house, you can discharge blanks, which will simulate the sound of the gun being fired with, you know, bullets being flown through the walls. If you're going for realism, use the gun tails from the appropriate gun that you are firing for each gun. However, if you're looking for hyper-realism, don't be scared to go up a few calibers to get a bigger sounding tail. This goes without saying, but tails should be unique to each gun. Now let's talk about some of the extra layers you can include. For most weapons, when a gun is fired, a shell is ejected. This can create a ting sound as the case collides with a gun and flies through the air. These are relatively easy to create actually. Just take two empty casings and throw the shells at one another in midair and record the impact that they make. Then layer that with a mechanical click and bingo, you have a shell eject sound. You can also get away with using coin flips or pitching down other shells to make them sound larger. A cool trick if you have some time, head down to your local gun range and ask them for some empty shell casings. They are sure to have a bunch of them on hand or ask a friend next time they go out shooting to save you some of the empties. Knowing the types of surfaces that your characters will encounter play a massive role in multiple sound departments. But one of the biggest reasons is knowing which surfaces your bullets and magazines can fall on. When I go out and sample shells and mag drops, I always try to capture as many surfaces as I can for each caliber. Cement, metal, wood, hollow wood, carpet, dirt, glass, grass, mud, sand, water, and other shell cases. Now shells come in all different shapes and sizes, and making sure that you capture different calibers of rounds on different surfaces is extremely important in creating realism within your weapons. Also pay attention to some shotgun shell casings because some of them are paper and some of them are plastic. Audio information is extremely valuable to people. Hell, there are people on this planet that can see and tell what types of materials objects are using nothing but their ears. So providing subtle audio feedback on things like distances really help make a player make decisions quickly. One really cool thing that the COD sound team has implemented into Cold War was using an audio cue to let you know how close your gun is to being empty. Have a listen to this. 
small details like this not only give your players valuable information so they don't need to look at their HUD as much, but it also helps drastically add to the realism of your weapons. The last little extra bit that you can include is different audio mixes for your aim down sights versus when you fire from the hip. When you hold the gun to your head, you should hear more mechanical sounds and less of the shot itself. This is such a tiny detail, but it is very much appreciated. Compression on guns is your friend. Squashing down that transient with a fast attack and dialing in your release will really help bring up the extra characteristics within the gun without clipping your masters. Having a nice fast attack with a long release can really help make your tail sound more consistent. Now, one thing that compression does is absolutely destroys the dynamics, but it is necessary to bring out the quieter characteristics of louder sounds. Bringing back the dynamics using a transient shaper is a wonderful way of doing this. My all-time favorite transient shaper is by Kilohertz. It not only has a super useful interface, they also allow you to adjust the pump feature, which is a massive improvement over just boosting the attack of your samples. Now I talk about Boom Library a lot on this channel as they have some absolutely amazing plugins. Enrage, Recenter, Enforcer are all fantastic tools when we are talking about designing weapons. But Enforcer is designed to add that extra low impact to your sounds and just makes things easy. But you can really do this with any sub-triggering plugin. Boom Library just happens to be my favorite. Pitch and volume are super common talking points on this channel. Pitching things up give you a smaller sounding object while pitching things down give you a larger sounding object. And using volume envelopes, you can really remove a lot of tails from the actual shots themselves. You wanna get the actual shots themselves semi-dry or with as little tail information as possible as we're gonna be replacing them with different tails when we assemble the gun. Saturation works really well in all areas of weapon sound design, but it really helps bring out those mechanical elements. Saturation by nature will also go ahead and apply a small or large amount of compression which really goes ahead and fills out the sound. For this section of the video I'm going to be using a program called Weaponizer by Kronos because you can quickly assemble, preview your guns, and you can also make some crazy sounds like this. Future video maybe? Anyways, Weaponizer is really good at testing your weapons before you export all the samples and send them off to your implementers. We can load our mechanical sounds into the onset layer, our firing sounds into the body layer, our LFE into the thump layer, and then all of our tails into the tail layer. From there, we can stagger out our elements so they don't all play at the same time. This is a super important step as we don't want to stack our transients on top of one another, which will result in a much weaker sounding gun. Now that we got the gun assembled, the final component to your gun sound design is reverb. Having interior tails are important samples to have, but you'll need to place the entire sound through a single space. Using plugins like Altiverb is easy because Altiverb also integrates with Wise, but if you're working on a film or game side of things, you can handle a lot of this stuff within your middleware. If you're on the film side of things, go nuts with using any reverb you enjoy. Okay, now that we have the gun assembled, let's see how it sounds. Thank you so much for watching. The YouTube channel has definitely pushed me to be a better sound designer overall, as I'm always researching new topics to explore. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below, and if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, as it really does help the channel out a lot. A huge thank you to the Call of Duty sound team, by the way, for all the years of awesome sound you guys have done. You guys are amazing to learn from. But with that being said, go make some noise.